Uh, potentially one of the greatest coaches in boxing today, Bobby Benton. What's up, Bobby? What's up, buddy? How are you? Pretty good. Hey, Bobby, man, how'd you get started in boxing, man? Uh, I grew up in the gym. My father started the gym when I was... My first gym was uh, Heights Boxing Club in 1986. And then from there, my dad's always had the gym. And then when he got out, I just kept the gym. So, hmm. so uh, what's the greatest challenge about balancing uh, running a gym and being such an uh, elite coach? Um, for me, it's just, it's, it's a lifestyle. So it's nothing, it's not hard for me. It's just work, you know, like nothing changed. Like you go, we had these good fights. We had a couple good weeks, a couple good months. And I'm just the same thing back in the gym. Like I'm still, I back in the gym this morning. So <laughs> there's nothing, nothing changes. Just stay, stay level. Just. So currently you have a uh, two champions in boxing. You have a uh, Regis Progre and Oshaki Foster. What's, uh, what's been the greatest part of the journey with, with them individually? Um, the greatest part is just, you know, kind of the, what we had to go through to get there, you know? Like, um, there are two guys that neither, nobody really wanted them, you know? Like, no, no promoters. They, they didn't have a big-time promoter to start out with. We tried to push them on. Nobody, nobody really believed in them, but look at them now, you know? So that's, uh, that, to me, is like the, it's been a, What's been, uh, I'll say, I hear you say nobody believed in them. Is that one of the greatest challenges you deal with them individually or what? Yeah. I mean, it's it's easy. It's not easy. I'm not going to say easy, but it's easier when you got money behind you or have, uh, you know, have one of these big promoters. It's a lot easier to to develop the guys. But when you're, when you're, uh, you don't, it's a lot harder. Give me a second, bud. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so basically, when when you're ground level like that, it's it's different. It's a different kind of out the mud type of struggle. Yeah, yeah. You're so like both Regis and Shock were fighting for free, you know. Like, and several times, like with Regis, we drove to, to you know out of town, Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana. And they canceled the whole show. We didn't fight. He weighed in. A lot of that stuff happened. So it's it's been a journey, you know. But the that's it's it just is what it is, you know. You. You either cry about it and, and quit, or you just keep grinding. So when uh, when Regis just uh, became the WBC champion for the second time, what was different about training in that Zapata camp than any other camp? Is there anything different? Um, well, since the loss, I mean, Regis always has a chip on his shoulder, but it was worse, you know? Like, he was like, there was no, like, there was no, he was no, there was nothing going to stop him. No matter who it was, he didn't care. He's like, he's getting it back, you know. And it, look how long it took. It took us, you know, three years to get back to that spot. You have a certain level of patience that got to be involved in that? Yes. Do you have to employ the patience on him, or does he have to already have that going? He's got it. They're, both of them, Shaka and him, both have the patience to, uh, you know. Yeah, you, I mean, we, of course, they have days when they come in, they're frustrated, and then we just try to just mellow it out and, you know, keep him focused. It's not, and with them too, it's not hard to keep him focused. So going into the Ray Vargas fight a few weeks ago, which I was there, uh, what uh, anything unique about that camp? Uh, prepare for, I guess that was his first title shot, right? Yeah. So anything different or unique that you guys kind of implement? You got to give him no secrets, but as far as his general, you know, tutelage, anything go the differently? The focus, you know, always focus. But this camp was way different. There was no. Um, no downtime for him. He was on 10. I really had to slow him down, like, days to tell him, you know, go home, take off today, which that's always a good thing. That he's you know? locked in like yeah. that. Yeah, and Regis the same way. Like, there's days when I'm looking at him and he, I can tell he's tired, but he still wants to work, and I'm like, let's just take off today. And that's the hard part for them. Like, no, 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 I'm going to work. But I hear whispers of, uh, it may not be whispers now, but uh, Regis and uh, Catterall? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's a possibility. You know, they both, uh, it's... They both want big fights, so... That's if, a big fight. Yeah, if they can get it right, you know, make it happen, So, yeah. Oshak is the, the WBC champion uh, at 130. What happens next? A unification or just... Uh, that'd be nice, but we have mandatories. Uh, I think we have two mandatories, Eduardo Hernandez and somebody else. I can't remember. Okay. But that's supposed to what's, that's supposed to what, what's happened with Shock. but we'll see. We just, you know... On a, just a, just a week old. So on a similar note, on another sport, 
How was it preparing Austin Trout for uh, bare knuckles? Because you do train Austin, so how was that? Considering it's a different, it's a cousin to boxing, but it's definitely not boxing. It was a definitely different. That was the whole thing with him. Was like we trained a lot with the MMA guys. Bob Perez, my partner, he he's got all the UFC guys. So we that's what we did. I got with him. I said, look, he needs to work with these guys on on the inside game, and and it, it's not boxing at all. You know, everybody thinks like, oh, just box the guy. Well, Malinaji tried that. And, he lost. and the thing is, with the, both him and Corley, Chop Chop Corley, they both hurt their hands. So we got some insight from the guys, um, the the bare knuckle guys, saying like, don't don't follow through with your shots, just snap them, and that's kind of what we did, and we made it through the fight clean. Huh. So uh, anything special as far as any guys coming up that you're working with, that you're excited I, I about? Gotta, I can't. I'll I'll lose I'll lose track of everybody. Um, I mean, we got Eduardo Garcia. Oh my uh, Ray Tlaib, um, Milan Pratt, he's number 10 in the world, WBA, 54-pounder. Um, uh, I mean, I, everybody in the gym, I'm forgetting. The kid Laz is 1-0. I mean, we've got 20 pros in here, so I can't I can't think everybody right off the top of my head. But the, the gym is, is great. You know, it's, it's, it's a good time right now. Every time, every time that the gym has been full like this, like, it's always been, like, Boxing's streaky, so when you, when guys are winning, it's like it just keeps it keeps going it and grows. going. Like, I, uh, can you say the momentum from Regis to Shock to even Austin kind of carries over into 100%. the gym? Can, 100%. can guys feel that? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a vibe in the gym. You know, you definitely they see everybody sees what's going on, and they you know when you start to lose one, you want to backdoor with a win. You know, it's 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 tough. Uh, Huh. You have streaks where you lose sometimes. But that's why. That's why I said like we just try to stay level because it's easy to get a big head, and yeah. then it's when you get the big head, you get deflated. You crash, yeah. So Bobby, if we got in your car right now, what music's playing? Um, ninety-five point seven, whatever that station is. Like, you like oh, easy listening? I'm like whatever. I, I listen to everything: country, rap, anything like old school rap. I can't listen to the new rap. I don't understand. Yeah, I'm a '90s rap guy. So, so, so if you can uh, have a a big meal, what are you eating? Big meal? Mm-hmm. My pizza. <laughs> Bobby, ain't gonna oh, hold. Hold on, let me back that ice cream, chocolate ice cream. <laughs> All right, Bob, I ain't going to hold you up. I know you're a busy man with a big plan, man. But uh, I want to thank you for your time, and we look forward to the next time we see you in the corner, bro. I appreciate you having me. Thank you, bro. Thanks.